Hi everybody, welcome back or welcome to the channel, it's your boy Wicked T. Uh, today we're doing the end of month vlog. It is October 31st. Happy Halloween everybody. Hope everyone enjoys their, their fun. Uh, this actually won't be posted till Saturday. Um, because I got another video of Dusty's today. I got uh, Fright Night Friday for tomorrow and uh, the last one. Again, if anyone wants us to continue that series, let us know down below in the comments. Uh, people seem to have been enjoying it. Two to three hundred views each video is pretty good for this channel. Um, uh, so I'm not sure if anyone's actually watching them all the way through or just getting the links and going off and watching the actual video, but I don't care either way. Um, but yeah, uh, if you want us to, if you want, if you want me to continue that series, let me know down below. So we have Dusty's Archaeology Review next, and then I'll be right back to talk about the month. Hi everybody, welcome back or welcome to the channel. It's your boy Dusty. Today we are doing the Archaeology Review on Halloween night. Um, and we'll, we're going to start off with a 4,000 year old copper dagger discovered in Italy. Uh... A 4,000-year-old copper dagger has been unearthed in northeastern Italy's Tina Jama Cave, uh, according to Sci News, a Sci News report. Um, representatives from the Ka Foscari University said that the dagger is similar to copper daggers discovered in Slovenia. Um, a structure made of stone slabs and blocks between 2000 and 1500 BC uh, is where it was found uh, or was excavated near the entrance of the cave human skulls found nearby indicating the stone structure may have been a funerary fun may have had funerary functions or it may have been helped protect the interior of the cave from the wind flint arrowheads and long blades polished stone axes obsidian uh, stone and ceramic objects and shell ornaments show that the cave was visited repeatedly over thousands of years. So that's pretty cool. A uh, little copper guy, look at him here. Uh, I'm not sure, I think this is where the handle would have been. I'm assuming it would have been made out of bone, which is probably why it's not there anymore. Um, and next we have... Neolithic dwelling discovered in Serbia. According to a Newsweek report, Report traces of an 8,000 year old house belonging to Starcevo, Starcevo, the Starcevo culture, um, have been unearthed in the Balkans region of southeastern Europe. Uh, the rectangular structure is made of wattle and daub and stone with, with wooden posts. It was preserved, uh, was preserved because it had burned, explained archaeologist Barbara Horges uh, of Austria's Academy of Science. Um, the excavators also recovered grains, seed store, and seeds stored by early farmers. It had been previously suggested that the region's first farmers only settled uh, in one place seasonally and were otherwise nomadic. Uh, members of the Starcevo culture are also known to have raised animals, um, the archaeologists concluded. So that's pretty good. Then here's the structure. I'm assuming this is, would be a storage pit. Um, and you can see some of the ceramic shards, some other stone. Um, I'm also assuming this gray ashy layer is where the house burned down which preserved everything else underneath it. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Next we have Bronze Age wooden, yeah, a Bronze Age wooden tool discovered in England. Dorset View reports that nearly complete wooden spade was uncovered in a waterlogged area near Pool Harbor in southern England by researchers of Wessex archaeology. Um, it was radio camera dated to between 3500 and 3400 years ago 
years old, sorry. Uh, placing it firmly in, in the Middle Bronze Age. Uh, said uh, Ed Treasure of Wessex Archaeology. Treasure and his colleagues think the person who lost the tool made seasonal visits to the site uh, since little evidence of permanent settlement has been found in the area. So as you can see here is the wooden spade. Um, handle is kind of off-center. Um, maybe using it to scrape peat off a nearby bog. I'm not sure what else would be in a waterlogged area like that. Except a bog. Uh, peat bog. Um, but yeah, that is pretty cool considering it's wood and it's um, between 3,500 and 3,400 years old. So that's, that's awesome that it stayed preserved so long. Next we have Rock cut tombs unearthed in Malta. Malta today reports a construction project in eastern Malta has uncovered rock cut tombs dated to 2300 years ago. The tombs, three burials, burial chambers are thought to have been used by m multiple inhumations during the Punic and Roman period. The chambers were found sealed with rock slabs and would have been accessed through a shaft. Human skeletal remains, cremation urns, and grave goods were recovered from the chambers. Researchers, researchers will examine the evidence of the age, sex, and health of the individuals and conduct a DNA analysis. So here is the shaft um, that we're looking down into. Uh, north is that way. There's one chamber, there's two chambers, and the third chamber is just barely over here, visible over here. So each of these would have had a stone slab in front of them. In fact, this one looks like you can see the outline of where the stone slab was set. Uh, actually, you could see it pretty well in all of them. It looks like there's a lip there that would have caught that one. That one almost would have been flush. But yeah, those are these types of tombs are really cool. Um, most often because once you fill the shaft back in, you don't even know they're there. Which is probably why they were intact and were raided by looters or something. And then we have... Oh, what the heck? There we go. Bronze Age Settlement Excavated in Northern Vietnam. Now, I did this one because most of the time I don't see any from, from Vietnam or that region. So, according to Vietnam Net Global Reports, uh, that a Bronze Age Settlement has been uncovered in Northern Vietnam at the... Wan Chau archaeological site, a complex made up of Bronze Age sites. Um, members of the Institute of Archaeology said that the settlement was found on the western side of the Wan Chau Mound. Um, it appears the ancient people took advantage of the natural elevation and lower terrain to create a settlement within, surrounded by a protective moat. Um, the archaeologists explained yellow brown clay was used to cons as construction material. Burials were found at, on the site's outer slopes. Um, so yeah, that is pretty interesting. Here is some of the excavation, and here's the gentleman. Um, what was his name? Nagayan Nogok. I don't know how to pronounce that. N G O C Quay. This would be him here talking to, uh, looks like a reporter, and maybe some staff, some of his staff, or it's just some visiting um, locals. But yeah, look, he had, here's one of the graves. I, I can't tell from here which one it is, which one of these three that they have preserved. Um, but this guy has, there's a bronze dagger underneath him. And it looks like something else made of bronze here. A lance head, maybe? I'm not quite sure. It's hard to tell. Um, yeah, but I can't even... I'm trying to look for this stone. And it might be behind him. So it, it might be this one here. But clearly, the sides of this weren't carved down yet. So it could be any of them. This could have been removed, for all I know. But yeah, that is interesting because you hardly ever see um, anything in archaeology news from Vietnam. So, I thought that was really cool. 
And next, there's a Roman marble statue unearthed in Bulgaria. The Sofia Globe reports that a large, larger-than-life Roman statue dated to the 2nd or 3rd century AD was uncovered during construction work near the coast of the Black Sea, outside the walls of the ancient city of Odessa. Uh, the white marble figure depicts a middle-aged man with a short beard. His right hand is missing, and the other is other, and there is some damage to the face. A Greek engraving on the statue plinth names Gaius Marius Her Hermogenes, uh, who is shown wearing a toga and holding a scroll, which are both symbols of Roman authority. The statue has been transferred to the Archaeological Museum at Varna, uh, where it will be cleaned and restored. So, uh, yeah, you can see some of his face, and over here is some damage. His right hand is missing. Uh, but yeah, there's the there's the name uh, Gaius Mar Maris Hermogenes, um, which is kind of a cool name. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And there's the scroll. Uh, it looks like the scroll had a, has a little bit of damage too, but it could be could just be the image but yeah uh, statues big marble statues are awesome I would like to have one next is a World War II destroyer found off California coastline uh, live science reports that the wreckage of the destroyer USS Stewart has been found under 3,500 feet of water in the Cordell Bank National Marine Sanctuary by a team of researchers from the marine robotics company Ocean Infinity. Uh, Search, an archaeology, archaeology company, and Air Sea Heritage Foundation, the Maritime Marine Heritage Program at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, and the U.S. Navy. Originally designated DD-224, the destroyer was sent to Borneo shortly before the United States entered World War II. In February 1942, DD-224 was damaged during the Battle of, ba of Beidong Strait uh, and was eventually scuttled by a crew while in port on the Indonesian island of Java. The Japanese later raised the ship and used it as a patrol boat until the end of the war in 1945. Uh, the United States reclaimed the vessel and recommissioned it as DD-224, but found that it was in poor condition and decommissioned it in 1946. The Stewart was sunk by rocket fire by the US, by US airplanes and shells launched by the US warship uh, during target practice by US warships during target practice. Um, the USS Stewart represents a unique opportunity to study well-preserved example of early 20th century destroyer design, maritime archaeologist James Delgado of Search uh, said. Um, its story from the US Navy service to Japan capture and back again makes it a powerful symbol of Pacific War's complexity. So, uh, yeah, warships are awesome. I love them, too. Um, weapons and warships and planes, they're just so cool. Um, so those look like the um, mine where they would store mines before they dumped them. Or, I don't know if that's the bow or the stern. It's hard to tell. Um, but, yeah, you can see it's starting to grow over nicely with... Um, sea life uh, yeah it is it is cool and it's weird that the Japanese used it for a while but that that happens in war I guess next we have a 4,000 year old tomb discovered in Upper Egypt Aram online reports that a tomb dated to the 12th dynasty has been discovered on the west bank of the Nile River in Upper Egypt's western Asunat Mountain, uh, 
by a team of researchers from Soheg University and Berlin University. The tomb belonged to Edi, the daughter of uh, Jaifa Hapi, the governor of Asut, uh, during the reign of Senwasret the first, Senwasret the first, who ruled from 1961 to 1917 BC. Um, the researchers made the discovery while excavating the tomb of Edie's father. Uh, preliminary studies suggest that Edie died before reaching the age of 40 and suffered from a congenital foot defect, said Mohammed Ismail of the Supreme Council of Antiquities. Edie's tomb uh, had been looted in antiquity, causing damage to the uh, descendants' of remains. Um, but two wooden coffins, one inside the other, were found inside the chamber. Both were painted with text describing the journey to the afterlife. Smashed ceramic pots and wooden statues were also found within the within the uh, coffin. So here's the entrance to Edie's burial. Uh, here's the coffins in situ. I, I don't think they removed that. I think it was already removed. Um, the lid, sorry. I don't think they removed it. But uh, yeah. And it's interesting that they keep finding new tombs inside old tombs. I mean, they're, they're almost always all looted, which is sad, but you get some little bits, uh, wooden statues, smashed canopic jars, things of that nature. Next, we have medieval church excavated in Slovakia. According to reports in the Slovak Spectator, uh, a geophysical survey conducted at a site of the Church of the Epiphany uh, in central Slovakia's town of Ostraluka um, has revealed floor plan of a medieval structure measuring more than 55 feet long and 28 feet wide. The town was situated on a trade route where the toll, where a toll station was established in 1393. Archaeologist Jan Belgic uh, said the or Jan Belgic, sorry, uh, said that the investigation identified the centuries, 13th century rectangular nave and prebistry, um, and this sanctuary uh, was that was added in the fourth century, 14th century, sorry. Excavation of the site uncovered multiple entrances to the building and a well-preserved crypt with a barrel vault. Belljack and his team also found later fortification wall that enclosed the church and its cemetery. So this is the overview. Uh, there's the crypt and the barrel vault, I'm assuming. Um, or maybe that's the crypt or the barrel vault. What, it, that might be one or the other and this might be the other. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell from aerial view. But um, this picture down here is looking from this way. So uh, looking that way towards these trees. Um, but yeah, that is a, that is quite the church actually. It's not, not, not a bad size, 55 by 28 feet long. Right, so it's a pretty good sized church for a medieval one. Next we have early Christian church unearthed in Armenia. CBS News reports traces that of an early Christian church have been uncovered in Armenia at the site of the ancient city of Artzada Zad, Art by a team of German and Armenian researchers. The building, which dates back to the 4th century, is the oldest archaeological, archaeologically documented church in the country, says Akim uh, Lich, Lichenberg. Joachim Lichtenberg um, of the University of Munster. The age of the structure was determined by radiocarbon dating uh, of the remains of the wooden floor uh, uncovered at the site. Uh, a member of the Armenian Academy of Sciences added that the church measures about 100 feet across and was shaped like an octagon with a rectangular chamber that extended over four of the sides. Um, 
rectangular oh rectangular chambers plural sorry I missed the s uh, the floor is made of mostly sand and cement uh, well the walls were made of slab uh, slabs of terracotta that may have been imported from the Mediterranean uh, decorations in the structure are thought to have been made of terracotta as well he added so that is a cool little guy look at this church look at that thing so I'm assuming these are, are the chambers that were extended through each one um, I'm not sure this is a picture of the sorry this is a picture of the um, where they gridded off everything and then just started digging in those areas uh, we do this at other archaeological sites it's a common practice um, but yeah I thought the overview of this and the close-up view of I think it's this area here that they that they uh, chunked off and started doing their research in um, but yeah churches are fascinating because they're often preserved very well um, mostly because religious organizations seem to swap structures regularly um, like when a Christian community gets moved out by an Islamic community um, then yeah it will be it will just uh, change the interior of a church and make it into a mosque or exterior or do little changes but churches are tend to stay well preserved um, so that is pretty cool and that is the end of the archaeological report for October um, I hope you enjoyed if you did drop a like leave a comment down below and subscribe because it's free and it helps up the channel and I will catch you all in the next one bye bye I hope everyone enjoyed Dusty's archaeology review um, so the month has been pretty standard uh, for a 16. I'll have about uh, 16 to 20 videos out this month. Um, 22 if we count the 1st and 2nd of November, um, which the 1st will be the last Friday Night Friday, and the 2nd will be this. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a pretty standard month for us. Um, again, Halloween, Thanksgiving here in Canada. Um, yeah, it's been a couple holidays. Um, but otherwise, not much has been going on. We've just been trudging along with this, trying to get everything done. Um, the clip uh, the clip and video for today, uh, I th think it was uh, Pamina versus Slimes today. Um I left a little clip at the front of that uh, to prove that it's not me that's messing with the sound. Um, it has, it shows Dusty, the music's fine, but in the headphones that we use, it's often pretty loud, uh, so he turns down the settings instead of turning down the headphones, um, which ends up ruining the music. You can't, if you can hear it, it's just barely. Um, so I just left that little clip at the front of the video just to prove that it's not me during editing that's ruining it. It's dusty during recording. Um, so I'm going to have to teach him how to balance that, um, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that's been the month. Um, again, if there's anything else you guys want to see on this channel, just let us know in the comments. Um, I need to start a, a business email for the channel. Um, but yeah, that's been the month. Um, if you enjoyed our content, let us know. It's always nice to hear from the fans. I've gotten a lot of... Um, I'm not sure if it's positive. Uh, it's about 50-50 on the um, Amarillo's Butt Slapper review. Um that one has over three thirty five hundred views, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, um, 
if you want us to do anything like that again in the future, uh, hopefully we can get a new computer sometime soon and we can do that. But uh, yeah, that's been the month of October. Um, this has been the end of month vlog. If you enjoy this content, let us know. Um, subscribe, it's free. I mean, it, it doesn't cost you anything. And drop a like and a comment because it helps with the algorithm, the dreaded YouTube algorithm that everyone talks about all the time in their videos. But yeah, I will see you all at the end of next month. Next month.